Hello everybody and welcome to part 19 of the Blender 2.80 Absolute Beginners course and in this video we are going to talk about the subdivision modifier, a very important lesson that will bring your Blender modeling skills to another level. So as you can see I've already added a default Suzanne monkey model to the scene and by default it looks quite edgy. So what the subdivision modifier does by default as well is making things smoother. I'm going to apply it to the model right now and you can see it instantly becomes better looking and if I increase the level of subdivisions here it becomes even better looking to the point where it's actually smooth without applying the smooth shading option here. But please take, keep in mind, if you go too high with this value here, your Blender will, will crash and with multiple objects, it, you will have a very, very hard time working in the viewport. So as I said, uh, general purpose of the subdivision modifier is making things smoother and the way Blender does it is by simply subdividing your mesh. So you can see when I'm in the edit mode right now, this is the actual geometry I have present in Blender. If I click this icon here, it will disable the subdivision preview in the edit mode. When I click it, you can see the object gets rounder. And once I leave the edit mode, I can see the effects that the subdivision modifier does to my object. So being in the object mode, when I go to the wireframe view, you can see the mesh is now much denser and this is how it will look like in the edit mode if I apply the modifier. So right now if I go to the edit mode this is the mesh Blender gave me. So making objects smoother, making the meshes denser is the most basic use of the subdivision modifier but there is also something uh, we could call a subdivision modeling and that's something I want to teach you about in this video, so let's just jump into it. To make this video more practical, we're going to use a referenced image for the first time. It sounds magical, but what it means, we are going to simply use this shape as a base for our object. And in order to get an image, to get a link to this image, please just visit the Chocofer site linked below, where I have a little bit more material on the topics we are covering here. So in order to import the image to Blender, you just simply drag and drop it. So I'm doing it right now and you can see the image is a little bit bent once I do it. So let's activate the menu on the right by pressing the N key and let's select the object and zero all the values here. So now it's perfectly aligned to the scene center with zero rotation. Let's add 90 degrees here in the X axis. And let's use the simple front view for, yeah, as a starting point. We might also consider increasing, decreasing, sorry, the transparency of the object. So you're gonna use this icon here and this slider here to make an image less transparent and a little bit, yeah, it makes things a little bit easier when you're modeling. As you can see, I'm aligning the bottom part of the object to the X axis. So a newly created mesh by us will be aligned to the bottom as well. Let's keep the transparency at 40%. And by pressing Shift A, let's add a circle. At this point, I'm going to already add the subdivision modifier, but I'm going to keep the subdivision level uh, at 1. And when I enter the edit mode, let's just scale up the object so it matches this area here and extrude it upwards, pressing the E key, then Z. Let's now scale it like this, extrude again, scale it like that. So you can see we are working in the edit mode and what you can see right now selected, maybe let's go to the edges. These are the only edge loops we have, but you can see the shape is actually rounding around this area. And that's because we have 
the subdivision modifier added and visible in the edit mode. I can disable the view, but this is what we call the subdivision modeling. So you can see um, creating the shape in the edit mode, but the interpolated, the subdivide geometry visible in the edit mode is something that I'm actually focusing on. So it might be quite hard at first, especially, well, we never did it before. Sorry, I just by mistake went to the sculpting mode. But once you rotate the object, look around, you can see um, yeah, how it actually looks like. So we're just going to continue by adding the new geometry elements. It might become um, a little bit too messy. So from time to time, you might consider disabling the uh, edit mode preview of the subdivide geometry. But now let's just keep on extruding and then we will get back to the object later and fine tune its details. As you can see, I'm already getting to the top. So let's just go like this very roughly. And let's keep the top of the object open just for now. Same with the bottom. For a better look, I'm gonna switch to the smooth shading mode right now. And we can move the reference image a little bit to the side just to see how our actual model looks like, well, in comparison to the reference. So what you can already see, we are kind of missing this detail here. And in order to make it happen, we might need to scale this area up just a little bit. But even when I do this, you can see it becomes very flat and we have this nice edge visible here. So how we can do this, having the subdivision modifier applied and an answer to that question is adding an edge loop. So you already know from the previous video how to do that. I'm going to press Ctrl R and you can see these are the edge loops I could add using my scroll on the mouse, but let's just stick to the one here. And if I'm sliding it around the faces, you can see the preview of the subdivided mesh also changes. So let's add two edge loops just here for now and go to the object mode. You can see this nice rounded edge kind of appeared here already. Let's see if we can create the sharp edge here. And to do that, we're going to add two new edge loops, just like that. So what you can already see, I think, is that when using the subdivision modifier and working in the edit mode, the edge loops are the actual elements we are using to control the look and the shape of the object. So again, if we want to create this nice area here, which is quite flat for now in our object, we just need to add a few more edge loops. So I'm going to create this one, scale it up like this. And if I exit the edit mode, we can see the shape improves. Let's add one more edge loop here and scale it up just like that. And you can see we already have this kind of look. We need to make this area a bit deeper in our object. So I'm gonna scale this edge loop downwards just a bit and add the two edge loops here, just like that. So this method of modeling looks a little bit like sculpting even, in my opinion. But again, what you the, the way you have to approach it in your mind is simply thinking of those edge loops as, well, some kind of interpolation points. Because what Blender does, it takes this point and this point from the edit mode and it tries to smoothen everything between these two points. Meaning, if I have an edge here and I want to make it sharp, all I have to do 
is simply adding to edge loops here because this is a very short distance and Blender doesn't have much space to add any new geometry here or to make it bent. So you can see once I added those two edge loops, this area instantly became sharper. If I remove them, it becomes smooth again. So I guess it might sound quite easy when you're simply watching the video. That's why I would encourage you to practice yourself. Uh, the chess figure like the one we are working on right now doesn't have to be the only object. There are multiple other examples I think you could work on. For example, let's say a vase, a plate, uh, some kitchen stuff in general. And yeah, th the only thing you have to do when working on objects like this is simply thinking of creating the geometry as you are forming it out of, out of clay, let's say. So if I'm just moving those edges around like that and go to the object mode, I can see the shape following them. So Blender makes things smooth for me. If I want to make a sharp area like this, I simply add two edge loops close to the main loop. Let's call it this way. And you can see this area becomes sharp instantly. And what's what's really great about this technique, in my opinion, is as long as you don't apply the subdivision modifier, it's non-destructible. So you can always fine tune the curvature of the elements. Let's say I'm not happy with the shape of this area. I can very easily, just by selecting the edge loops, I hope you remember the shortcut. If you, if, if you don't, then it's Alt key on the keyboard and left clicking around the edge loops on the object. So by, by just, just by moving the edge loops, you're basically influencing the shape of your model. So let me just work on this area a little bit more because I'm not super happy with its shape. By the way, uh, I'm also splitting those, ver uh, those edge loops by using the bevel tool, uh, also covered in one of the previous videos. So Alt, uh, I'm pressing Alt key and left clicking, then Control B for bevel and using my mouse scroll to make this curvature even. And now we need to create this point here. So I might need to remove some of the edge loops first because, well, I'm not happy with the look. Let's move this edge down here, scale it up like this, add another edge loop here. And yeah, again, we are simply sculpting. We are modeling. This is where the word modeling comes from because we are actually modeling a shape simply in the 3D environment. So you might see right now why I said the subdivision modeling is a very important technique because this way you create all of the shapes in computer graphics that yeah have some curvature on it that might be just a chess pawn like this but that might also be a car, an airplane any other well object basically so we still need to add a little bit of shape here i need to remove this edge loop and scale this area up i will also remove this edge loop just for now scale this area like this and we are more or less having what you can see in the reference. What we still didn't cover is the tip of the object. So let's get to it right now. And you might be tempted to simply extrude it and merge at the center as we did in the previous, with the pre in some of the previous videos. And it might work as it actually does in our example but quite often having triangles in a curved surfaces like here generates issues. So let me just select those edge loops, this edge loop here, move it down like this. So we have a tip of an object here. 
let's remove this edge loop and after we add another subdivision level you can see we get this strange strange shading visible the reason for that is as I mentioned because we have triangles here I already covered it very roughly in one of the er earlier videos um, in general in 3d applications having triangles around the smooth surfaces and trying to create edge loops around them doesn't work well it usually ends with those kind of shading bugs and in order to prevent that we just need to plan our geometry a bit differently so instead of simply merging those objects here at one point let's extrude them like this creating this edge loop and now let's merge them at the center point so you can see this makes the tip of our chest figure a bit flat but we can also shrink this entire area to this little point here we can also add one more edge loop here to make it smoother like this and now it becomes well maybe we need to move those edge loops downwards a little bit so again modeling modeling the shape and yeah once we do that it actually becomes quite nice so what we always have to remember uh, about doing is separating those triangle faces with additional edge loop from the curved surfaces that's why the, this is the way we can prevent those shading bugs from happening so we are now getting to the end of this video and I'm super proud of you if you followed because you already know the very basics of subdivision modeling and the subdivision modeling is a technique used professionally for well creating the actual 3d models that people use in video games in act architectural visualization in many different <laughs> areas so thank you very much for watching in the next video i'm going to show you how to mix the subdivision modifier with the mirror modifier we've learned about in the previous video what are the pitfalls and things we have to look for and again we will learn a little bit more extra theory on 3d modeling the things you have to pay attention to when creating your own stuff as always i will really highly suggest finding a similar references to the one i have here so something symmetrical and circle based i will also link to some of the references in the video description so please check that out and yeah as always thank you for watching thank you for subscribing to this channel this really keeps me motivated and yeah guys thank you and girls thank you for watching see you in the next part bye